to Lori Farm. So today we're getting close to harvesting on the beets. They're growing fantastically. I got a few really good sized ones right there that we'll probably harvest in the next couple of days because like I said, I like them a little bit smaller because they taste better, uh, a little more um, sweet. The good thing about beets is you can eat actually the whole plant. You can eat the beet root, which most people are used to, and then the leaves you can make a salad out of. Tastes great, just like any other salad. Beets, I also like them. Uh, we just boil them and throw them with salt. And the nice thing is you don't have to peel them because when you boil them, the skin just kind of falls right off. So they're pretty easy to prepare and eat. And as you can tell, they're flourishing. So beets are good for your blood. They're blood builders. They're also anti-inflammatory food and they are filled with antioxidants. They're good for cardiovascular health and digestion. Um, and obviously they're fibrous, so they're good for um, what fiber does. And they're all around just a good vegetable to have growing in your garden and add to a regular dinner. You can roast them, you can boil them, or you can steam them. So green beans are getting huge, as you can tell. They're kind of almost out of control. They're just about gonna flower. If you look real closely, you can see them um, budding out. Beans are great because they're easy to can and you can just grab them right off the vine and eat them raw, or we like to boil them down a little bit. They're high in vitamin K. They have great anti-aging properties. They're really good for hair, skin, and nails, and they are also anti-inflammatory and high in fiber. So they're all around a pretty good vegetable to add to any meal and pretty easy to cook. So the carrots are starting to come up. They're looking good. They're planted a little closely, but it'll still work out pretty good. Um, they are really great for oral health, um, immunity, and everyone's out of carrots, you know how to clean those, they're pretty easy um, and cost effective. They don't cost much to plant when they come through. Every kid likes a carrot, so it's also a really good vegetable to have around the house. And then also our snow peas are coming up nicely. They're actually hooking themselves to the fence that Shane built, which is really nice because it's less work for me. And the snow peas- They should are... start flowering here in the next couple of days. They've about doubled, tripled since probably my last video. Um, those are high in fiber also, and you can eat them raw, just pull them right off. My kids like to pop them open and eat the pods, but you can eat the whole thing, dip them in ranch. They're pretty good. Uh, this week I also got a walking onion, which to be truthful, I don't know a whole heck of a lot about. Um, a friend gave them to me. They're actually really cool plants. Um, apparently they just kind of tip over and replant themselves, which is why they're called a walking onion. And they have these cool little bulbs here, if you take a look, that just tip right over and reseed. And you can eat the whole thing. You can eat it just like a chives. You can rip this off and chomp on it, or you can eat the bulb. Tomato plants are getting big. They're almost my height, as you can tell. Um, they're flowering and starting to develop tomatoes. We have a few little ones over here and a bigger beefsteak one over there. Uh, I like tomatoes because they're really easy. Just slice them up, make a BLT, or if you're a vegetarian, you could just have a BL. That's fun. Um, <laughs> They're high in lycopene, which is a really good thing because it fights sun damage and free radicals. They also have a lot of vitamin B and E in them. So they're good for cardiovascular health and they're all around a good vegetable. Fun fact, when tomatoes were first discovered, since they're a nightshade plant, they were thought to be poisonous so people wouldn't eat them. But actually they're quite delicious and come in many flavors. So the potatoes are grown real tall and um, they're starting to flower. There you have that pretty purple flower, which I do like. They do actually seed out into like this weird um, tomato looking plant out of the flower, which you don't want to eat because they're toxic and you definitely want to keep dogs away because it can kill your dog. Anyways, you hill them weekly, generally. Sometimes you got to hill them twice a week, depending on how big they're getting. Uh, we're in the back garden. So this has our zucchini, cucumbers and pumpkins. The zucchinis are growing quite big. We have a few right in here, as you can see, starting to come through. Zucchinis are really good because they can help control thyroid um, function and also lower cholesterol. They're also good for people who are asthmatic. And they're all around a pretty good vegetable. They're high in a lot of vitamins, 
fiber. They're easy to cook. You can eat them raw or you can bake them. You can just toss them into a salad. You can make zucchini bread, zucchini cupcakes, cookies, really anything like that. The smaller they're harvested, if they have like the flour still attached, they are the more flavorful. So a lot of like um, restaurants and stuff will buy them smaller because they're more flavorful. You can eat them at any size though. I notice a lot of people like to buy them bigger because they feel like they're getting their money's worth so you can make a lot more with them when they're sizable. And when they're bigger, you can also make like little mini uh, pizzas and stuff with them, which is kind of fun. So we're in greenhouse number one where I planted beets and green beans. They're all doing pretty good. They're a couple weeks behind what we planted out there, but they're still catching up really well because of the greenhouse and trapping in the heat and humidity. So we're in greenhouse number two where I have the peppers and the yellow squash. The peppers are haven't really grown a whole lot in height, but they are flowering quite a bit. And also we have a couple of peppers growing. I don't know if you can see them here. Um, so we have a few different varieties and they're all taking pretty good. We did just transplant them, so it's gonna take a little bit for the roots to kind of take hold. And I suspect in the next week or two, they'll probably double in height. We have unfortunately had a lot of rain and it's been really cold at night, so that really doesn't help too much. Welcome to the Chaos Garden. So Shane was shooting another video, so he um, plowed up this field and kind of tore it all up. And we really didn't have much plans for it besides to show what you'll see in that video, so look for that in the next week. Um, so we decided, you know what, we got a bunch of extra seeds and nowhere to put them and they're, you know, they don't last super great. So we just kind of threw everything everywhere. We have pretty much zero intentions to weed it or really take care of it. We're just kind of doing it as an experiment to see what the heck happens. So we have a mixture of literally everything plus some. So we have corn, we have extra pumpkins, we have cilantro, I even put some asparagus down, extra cucumber seeds, I think a few cantaloupe seeds, pumpkin seeds, uh, giant dill, mammoth dill, some basil, and a, some tomatoes even I think, and some more snap peas. So it'll be interesting to see if anything comes up and what it looks like. I'm hoping we get just a crazy mixture of stuff that makes it worthwhile, but if nothing shows up, what the heck. Well, thanks for watching and remember to like and subscribe and we'll see you at the next video.